Welcome back everyone, this is my uh, Stam DK, my, my main actually, um, which I use for Dungeons Trials, just about everything, and Maelstrom of course as well. Um, there's a few videos I've done in the past, nothing really spectacular in comparison to Andy S and those guys because they are machines, but I do Maelstrom with this guy a lot. I've flawless it several times, including no synergies, none of that stuff. And a few people have been asking what I use. So I shall be showing you what I personally use um, in there. And I'll also show you what I use in trials, uh, in terms of skills, gear, and also um, a little peek at some optimal choices in while using the DK and, and why. Um, they do play very similar to a Stam Sork in terms of you have typical rapid strikes, dot, beast trap, and your bow abilities on the back, but we use them slightly differently. Um, and that comes along with the gear as well. So I'll show, first of all, the skills, uh, what they are and why they are there. Uh, first of all, we have Venom Claw, which is a DK ability, really, really powerful dot, in fact. Uh, every two seconds, it gets progressively stronger by 12%. So that's really, really nice. Also really cheap and lasts quite a long time as well. It's 10.5 seconds. So, I don't know how you get the last tick when it's 1.5 seconds missing, but never mind. That's really powerful. Uh, Beast Trap as well. Really, really powerful dot. Um, also, um, it rearms. The rearming trap. So, it's not just down for 6 seconds. Once that's run out, it will pop again underneath a target. And that will give you 12% uh, increased critical damage, which will stack with the Shadow Munder Stone, uh, Warhorn, um, what's the healer ability called? Combat Prayer, any of those, they all stack. So that's really, really nice. Uh, Evil Hunter is there just purposely for the crit and for the bonus weapon damage. I'll get to that in a second. This is vital. Um, I know a lot of you use Rapid Strikes because it does more DPS. Yes, it does, marginally. However, if you keep stabbing with this, you won't die. It's really, really powerful. You don't necessarily need it as a stam sort because your heals are ridiculous anyway. But as a DK, your sustain, your personal health sustain, is balls. You, you die really fast because you're squishy as hell. So this makes you really, really strong. Um, also, Blood Craze as well is another dot which gives you another heal over time and they stack together. So you can... Uh, I'll call this Rapid Strikes because that's what, it, what everyone knows it as. But Rapid Strikes and then a dot straight after. Rapid Strikes and another dot straight after. We'll get to rotations in a minute, but basically this has really high uptime. So as long as you connect with the last hit every time you cast this, you'll heal for 60% of the last hit. And that's really, really important in both Maelstrom and Trials um, to stay alive as a Dragon Knight. Uh, yes, your healers are supposed to heal you, but if you're a proper group player, then you want to make sure you've got some stealth for sustain as well. And when I get to the back bar, some group support. As a stam sork, you probably can't fit this all the time, but as a DK, you can quite easily. This, I see a lot of tanks using to try and keep the group healed. There's no harm in you doing it. I've saved myself, I've saved other people, I've kept tanks or healers up when shit hits the fan. It's really, really good. So there's no need to not have it on the bar. Don't just assume that the healers are going to keep you up. Things go wrong, or things go right, whichever way. It's really useful. Uh, poison injection, very, very powerful dot. Um, it gets much much stronger the lower the enemy's health, but don't just treat it as an execute It's not just an execute. It's a very strong dot throughout your rotation anyway, so make sure this is always up uh, Noxus breath. This is a reasonably strong dot It's got an AOE effect to it as well in a cone in front of you, which is quite useful in ad pulls It's also quite easy to fit inside your rotation um, And it it has minor fra uh, major fracture on it as well, which does reduce the targets uh, physical resistances is really useful in uh, ad pulls, obviously because the tank may not be able to grab everything all at once and you instantly take their resist down. It's really good in Maelstrom because obviously you want to reduce their resistances. But it's not the main debuff for Major Fracture. The tank should really have that running. But again, keep it on. It keeps the uptime there. It keeps um, ads all debuffed and it's a really nice dot too. Igneous Weapons. Now this is if you don't have um, potions running. Um, we'll mess around with some of that in a little while, um, but it's really, really powerful. It's 20% uh, increased damage to spell damage and weapon damage, so major sorcery and major brutality combined 
for a very long time actually, nearly 40 seconds, that's a big buff. Um, it's also what I use as a Magicka dump, and I use it to gain back stamina when I'm short. I'll get to that in a moment also. Uh, Endless Hail, reasonably long dot, very, very powerful, really strong with the Maelstrom bow, um, which gets progressively stronger, and the ticks are 0.5 of a second, so it's very, very strong. Standard of Might is the ultimate, which we use all the time. We try not to use Dawnbreaker too much unless we're in a really bad situation. We're almost out of resources and we haven't got a choice. But this is your main ultimate. Um, it debuffs the target by 30% healing. It increases all of your damage that you already got down or that you put on by 20% as well as doing flame damage. But as we'll see, that goes up with crit damage. And it also reduces the damage dealt to you by 20%. I've seen a lot of people shout mitigation in trials thinking that this helps everybody, it doesn't, it only protects you. But the damage increase is massive. So we'll look at some of the passives for why this is so strong, and we'll also look at the passives for the Fighters Guild as well, so we skip that part. But Igneous Weapons, when you press this, it's Earth and Heart passive, when you press it, not only does everybody get minor, major sorcery and major brutality, but they also get um, where is it? Minor brutality as well, increasing everybody's weapon damage by 5% as well, it stacks. As you can see here, it stacks. You have major brutality and minor brutality, both at the same time, which is nice. Um, everybody gets that in range, up to 6 people though, not 12, which is stupid, I know, but that's what it is. And you also get ultimate from it, so if you press it every so often, as you can see there, once every 6 seconds you'll get 3 ultimate, which is not a bad thing. Um, and for activating it, you receive 5% of your stamina back. So if you're running low, pop this a couple times, it will help. Now the Fighters Guild passives, which I wanted to go over, which is why we have so much on our front bar, because that's where we are all the time. Um, we have Beast Trap, Evil Hunter, which doesn't have to be there, I'll get to that and Flawless Stormbreaker. Now Flawless Stormbreaker gives you 5% for having it on the bar. Then every Fighter's Guild ability gives you 3% extra weapon damage for having them slotted. So as well as the 5% here, there's a further 3 for having it on, 3 there and 3 there. So your weapon damage is pretty good. Um, gear is a tricky one. This is where people are going to possibly disagree or maybe find something interesting that they didn't know. Um, generally, Stam Sorks use uh, 5 Vicious Orphidian, 5 Twice Born with 5 1 1, which is uh, 5 Medium, 1 Heavy, 1 Light, all Divines, and then they use an Axe and a Dagger, Sharpened and Precise. Yes, I do use an Axe and a Dagger, but for the purpose of this, I'm just going to show you the stats. Um, if we look here, just to prove that they're there, there's a sharpened and there's a precise. The only difference with this is obviously you get more crit chance because it's a dagger, whereas you would use a bleed on the axe. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, Maelstrom bow, sharpened, twice born, five medium, one light, all divines, one heavy as well, then vicious or fit in two pieces on the body, and the rest is on the jewelry. Now, Minor Slayer works in dungeons and trials. Maelstrom, Trials, Dungeons, all that, it works. So you get 5% extra damage. And this is incredible for sustain. 8% reduction to all the costs, and you get stamina back every time you kill something, or somebody else in your group kills something within, within range. And it makes you run faster as well. Really, really nice. But this setup doesn't necessarily work as well for a DK as it does for a Stam Sork, and I'm going to show you why. Um, the Maelstrom weapon is the most important part. Ignore the fact that that's a dagger, I'm looking at it for the sharpened and precise, nothing more. Um, 2k additional weapon and spell damage on your next single target dot after you use this. So you, I'll call this stabbies. You use stabby stabby dot. This will be stronger by a lot. Uh, let's give an example here because I need to hit something. Anyway, Vicious Ophidian, Sharpened and Precise. We'll start there. 
We'll hit this boss. I'll get killed a couple of times just so we can demonstrate what we're looking at. Buff on. Okay. So, let me heal. 14k. That's supposed to do over time. Rapid strike first. That goes up to 20k. It's massive. And this. I think that was it for that one. 27k. It's a huge dot. This um, Empower works for all single target dots. I'll get to that in a minute. If you look at the damage here, 1.8k, 1854 actually. This is sharpened and precise for rapid strikes. Okay, we'll dump that. Now, I'll Empower um, Blood Craze. Ready? No Blood Craze. 6.2. Buff up probably. Looking at the crits here. 6.2. 6.2. Not too bad. Um, oh, one more thing before I kill myself. Empower this. Skills. I don't think I'm going to get that in time. Try again. 18k. That's really strong, but that's also false because when the enemy's health is low, he gets stronger. And at the end of the video, I'll show you a quick burn and you'll see like a 25k hit, but they can go up to about 30 per tick on low health. Okay, let's get killed. Come on, kill me. Oh, you're sustained, by the way. Look at the heals. I'm not using Vigor, I'm just stabbing. Can't kill you. Bosses can kill you, don't be stupid, but of course this helps a lot. So in a trial, for example, when you're really under pressure, like the uh, the shield phase, 70 and 30% on the first boss in more of Lorcage, for example, help the healers by having something like this on because you can stay alive while you're doing your VPS. And if you pop this first, you stay alive even longer, and so do your teammates. It's stupid not to use it. Okay, kill me. And then I'll show you the difference. Uh, Rapid Strikes was hitting for 1.8k a tick, or a hit, sorry, if it's a crit. And the Rendon Slashes was doing 6.2k. So that's on the crit. Now I'm going to show you something rather interesting. Obviously, we know Minus Slayer is very, very powerful. And it would be silly not to use it in a dungeon or a trial. Especially Maelstrom and stuff like that. Fishes of Fidian is godlike in Maelstrom because of the sustain, but I'll show you why I don't use it. Ah! Come on. Give me a break. Die, 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 die. Have to way shrine it because he's bugged. Okay, let's do something really stupid now. Let's dump the Vicious Orphidian and replace it with the Two Fanged Snake, which doesn't have Minus Slayer on it. Where's it gone? And it doesn't have Sustain on it. Now this is where it gets tricky to an extent because you have to have your own ability to sustain. You need to be able to heavy attack when you need to. You need to pace your rotation, make sure it's correct. Uh, place your ultimates at the right time. Take potions if you need to. All that useful stuff, which is actually a lot, lot easier to do in a trial than a than maelstrom. But don't not get your resources back. Don't just stab, 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 and run out and then wonder what you're going to do. Make sure you use your skills efficiently. And this, this earth and heart passive that gives you five percent stamina back is a godsend. It's not just a buff, buffs everybody else and gives you stuff back. It's not going to hurt you to switch bars for one second to get this so you can block and not die and then have no DPS for 10 seconds or however long it takes for someone to res you. Anyway, uh, same weapons, sharpened and precise. And now the Two Fang Snake, which gives you weapon damage, stamina, crit, and penetration. Now I'm going to explain this set very quickly. 129 weapon damage, that's not hard to understand. That's the same as Vicious Orphidian at the end. You get a bonus at the end. 129, 129, they're the same. You get crit, one 
crit bonus in fact. Vicious Ophidian does get two, so you'll be down a little bit on crit. Um, this has Minor Slayer, which uh, gives you 5% extra damage done to everything inside Trials and Dungeons. This doesn't, so we're down one, aren't we? But we do have 1k extra stamina, which not only is extra resources, uh, stamina is, and magic is done on a 10 to 1 ratio. So a thousand stamina is effectively a hundred weapon damage, is how it how it comes in. But that wouldn't be as strong as Minor Slayer, would it? Because that's five percent, it's not a hundred damage, it's five percent. So clearly so far this is already Vicious of Video is already winning. However, this penetration bonus on the end is really, really powerful. It um, stacks five times, so that's five K penetration, and lasts for three seconds. However, that three seconds is not all it lasts for. As long as you're applying damage every three seconds minimum, that maximum stack bonus will stay with you. So if we use something like this, um, Endless Hail, for example, oh. 0.5 seconds is the tick timer on that. Every 0.5 seconds you do damage. So in your first two and a half seconds, you are already at max penetration bonus. Now all you've got to do is keep that running, and any other damage, obviously, you keep up. But just keep that running, and it will never fall off. Every fight, just put that down first, get in, and you're ready. Now, what we shall do, is you remember, uh, Rend and Slashes, or Blood Craze as it's called, because I have the healing morph, was 6.2k a tick, and the Rapid Strikes, or Blood Thirst, was 1.8. So let's buff up and go in, do the same again. 1.8, ah, it's gone up, you see, because our penetration's higher. See, 2k, all the time, if you crit. Now let's empower our buff, and put this on. 6.7, we went up, by 500. Every stab, we're up by 200, and the dot is up by 500 a tick. So we're already stronger. Now, we'll just get this one out of the way. This one's a little bit tricky to figure out. Look at the end tick of the, to of the top of the boss. 3.7, 3.9, 4k, 4.1, 4.2. Okay, 4.2 from Endless Hail at the end. Now I'm going to show you why we do not use sharpened and precise on a Dragon Knight. You do understand so that's absolutely fine. Okay, now we will show you um, the Two Fang Snake again, but instead of using the Sharpened and Precise, which we've already established is higher than Vicious or Fidian, even inside a dungeon, personal DPS, this isn't... Um, we'll get to the other one in a minute. Um, Vicious or Fidian is very, very powerful, and I would recommend that anybody uses it, both for damage and sustain, and for the crit bonuses, they're very nice. But this is higher for solo damage. So if you're not a trial buffer, if you're not using Alkosh, if you're not using Sunderflame or anything like that, and you're purely there to just bring as much DPS yourself as possible, Two Fang Snake is insane. It is a really nice percentage increase on damage over Minor Slayer. Um, as you've already seen with just, just the Rapid Strikes and the Rendon Slashes alone, not including the rest of the damage. We'll, we're now going to show the rest of it, on a DK specifically. Um, you always have an axe and a dagger because you want the crit from the dagger and you want the bleed from the axe. Now this is where this comes in and it's really important, the axe infused. I'm now going to explain why. The dagger also infused on a Dragon Knight. Yes, you will lose some crit. And yes, hang on a minute. Everything's there, character, yeah. You'll lose a bit of crit, you'll go down about 64. Yeah, which is still fine because you will still crit like hell. You can go with a Khajiit if you prefer to get more crit and you'll go over 70%, which is absolutely fine. Or you can stay Imperial or Red Guard. Um, the two bonuses to Imperial and Red Guard are quite simple. They both have exactly the same stamina, so they can both do exactly the same flat and crit damage. They per actually do more. Hit. Okay, so their flat damage will do more than somebody else's flat damage, and their crit will do more than somebody else's crit damage. So it's just the dice are a little lower because you don't get the crit bonus. 
Um, the only difference is Imperial get a 12% uh, max health and they can light attack uh, their health back basically based on 7% of their max health which is in their passives. Where have you got Imperial? Here he is. 12% max health, 10% max stamina, same as a red guard. Your melee attacks have a 10% chance to resource 6%, not 7, of your max health. The only difference is red guard do not get that. They get stamina back instead. So if you're struggling with sustain, go red guard. Um, but I'm going to show you why I've gone infused. First of all, um, you have more weapon damage than the regular maelstrom weapons. Okay, I know it's not all about flat weapon damage, but this does make a difference. Um, you have 1-1-3 one, one, as a bonus because of the infused bonus um, instead of 94 per weapon. So that's a small increase, but it's quite nice. Also, your dot does an extra 400 weapon damage per dot than the regular ones. Yes, I know, because there's no sharpened now, that's supposed to be around the same, they should balance, because you've got more penetration and less damage, or you have less penetration and more damage, they weigh off each other. Unfortunately, that's not the case, as such. Dragon Knights excel with their single target dots, and here's why. Single target dot number one, Venom Core. Empower it with a rapid strike, put, excuse me, put that on. Beast Trap, rapid strikes, put that on. Blood Craze, Rapid Strikes, put that on. Dawnbreaker even procs off of it. Noxus Breath procs off of it. Poison Injection procs off of it. And I'm sure if you've watched enough Outcast videos, you understand how that works um, in terms of rotation. It's very, very similar to the Stam Sork, and the weapon abilities also benefit from this as well. The reason you have an axe is because you get Twin Blade and Blunt, which is 8% chance, which is, actually happens a lot to do 11k physical damage over 6 seconds, that's 3 ticks, two, te 2 second ticks. That is empowered also by the Maelstrom weapons, that's another single target dot for you. That actually ends up doing somewhere between 10 and 15k a tick if you've got good damage going on, you've got your buffs and stuff. Um, it's really really powerful. So for example, if you go Rapid Strikes, Beast Trap, Switch, Volley, Poison Injection, Switch Back. We just used the Beast Trap, the Poison Injection, and you can get a bleed off the axe while you're switching, because you obviously light attack between the stabbies. So you can stab, 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 light attack, Beast Trap, switch. So Light, Beast Trap, and the Poison Injection are three separate abilities, but they all proc off of the same Rapid Strikes, if you time it right. So you go Rapid Strikes, Light Attack. That doesn't consume the buff, but it does work. Beast Trap doesn't consume it, but it does work. Poison Injection, your final one, does consume it. So by then you've got three dots now taken full advantage of this infused bonus. You now have three dots running with 400 extra weapon damage on each. Not just one of them. Um, by then you should already have two dots on as well, which is, is mad. Now, my rapid strokes may be a little bit lower, but my dots are gonna be much, much higher. Um, also, what's very important about the infused weapons is you have a sharpened bow on the back for one reason only, and that is that your initial hit from anything you hit with on that bar will be stronger because the penetration is really high. When you switch bars, you lose that. It doesn't even count. There's people that want to use infused bows because it makes the Maelstrom proc stronger. Correct, it does. But if you switch bars and go to your dual wield, you lose the infused bonus. However, because I'm using Infuse on the front bar, this buff here, increases the damage of volley per tick, is treated as Infused because I'm holding Infused weapons. So this is stronger, and my dots are stronger than any other weapon combination. On a Stam Sork, you have two, maybe three dots to take advantage of this. On a DK, you have, we don't use it for all of them all the time, but you have one, two, three, four if you use it, and also the dual wield um, ultimate if you wanted to. Five, six also procs offer on the first target. And then, dun, 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 where's it gone? Lost it. Where's my dual wield? Seven, the bleed. You have seven dots potentially that you could take full advantage of that maelstrom proc on 
which is really, really strong. So that's why I go and fuse. Stronger volley, stronger dots. We'll start with the volley that ended at like 4.2k maybe. So we'll hit that. Penetration should kick in. Make sure I'm on the right bar. One volley. Crit. 4.3, 4.6, 4.7. That is already the best part of 500 on the last tick. So that's 500 progressively. It's stronger each tick as it goes. So that already is stronger on the front bar. Rapid strikes are going to be a little weaker. Let's get a dot on him so we can get the penetration buff. Rapid strikes are 1.9. They are 67 lower than sharpened and precise. However, because that's our go-between ability, the one that um, buffs our dot. When we put on rend and slashes, come on crit. Instead of 6.7, crit now, he's let me down. Perfect. 7.1. 7.1. That is another 400 on top of Vicious Sulfidian Sharpened and Precise and on top of Fang Snake uh, Sharpened and Precise. On one dot. So if I do that dot, stab, stab, this dot, stab, stab. Beast Trap, switch, well, I'm not going to kill him because I need to try again. You can see where this is progressively going to get a bit mad. And I'll show a full rotation in a moment. But all of my dots are stronger than sharpened and precise. My bow is stronger than sharpened and precise. And I don't know if there's much more to say. It works. The twice the two fang snake on Vicious Orphidian is stronger if you're gonna use it. As you can see, obviously, flat damage, like per stab with rapid strikes, is very, very, very slightly less than sharpened and precise. Very slightly. But those aren't empowered by the infusion of the weapon. They just give you extra weapon damage. Um, everything we do, every single dot we do, apart from uh, Ender's Hail, is empowered by a Maelstrom weapon. You should always be rapid strikes, light attack, dot, rapid strikes, light attack, dot, rapid strikes, light attack. Switch bar and then dot again with poison injection before you go back. It should always be empowered first. If you keep that up, your beast trap, your bleed, your venom core, your blood craze, your poison injection, your dawn breaker if you really have to use it, or your dual wield ultimate if you really have to use that, which I would not recommend personally because I want to make as much mess with my banner as possible. Um, but lacerate, you can also do it with that as well. Yes, that says 31k, that'll go 50 or 60. It's huge. Um, as long as you are empowering everything you do, which is really, really easy to keep in a rotation once you get used to it, your infused weapons are going to boost the crap out of your DPS. And it will outperform um, sharpened and precise. Now, if you're a single target hitter and you are just using things like uh, perhaps Steel Tornado, um, what else have we got? What have we got here? Steel Tornado, uh, Flying Blade, stuff like that. Those are single target hits. They're based off of weapon damage and penetration and all the rest of it, just like everything else in the game is, but it's not empowered by any dot bonuses on your weapon. So for that purpose, yes, Sharpened and Precise would be fine. But if you are running a pure dot build and you want to make the most of it, go Infused on your weapons as a Dragon Knight. The, the bonuses are huge and your DPS will perform really, really, really well. Um, stamina Sustain really simple to keep on top of. Heavy attack, igneous weapons, or throw down a bloody ultimate, and you get all your resources back. Inside this, your dots are stupid. I've hit maximum, I think, 30k on a poison injection at low health on a boss. 
Don't forget also in a trial you're going to have spell power cure, you're going to have warhorn, you're going to have all that shiny stuff. It's going to get stupid. Now, I will run over this, the champion points and then I'll tell you alternatively what you can use. This setup I actually use in Maelstrom. I wouldn't recommend it for beginners um, or, or people that are going straight from Stam Sorked to DK because you do die really fast. I'll show you my Maelstrom setup in a moment. That's separate, but champion points. 100 in Warlord, sustained ship, you need as much reduction of the cost as possible. Put all the rest in, put 20 into Tenacity because you will be heavy attacking and put the rest into Mooncalf. This is a big bonus, it helps a lot. You start dipping, do a heavy attack between your rapid strikes instead of a light and your stamina will start coming back. Uh, don't worry about that. Personally I don't bother. This one, leave it. Leave that. Now this is very specific and has taken a lot of practice to try and figure out exactly where the biggest amount of damage I can get will come from. Mighty physical and poison damage. We are a DK. We have shit tons of poison and physical damage. I'll show you the passive in a sec for that. Everything we're using is dots. Get, get nice points in there. I have done 100 in here or 100 in here. It's diminished returns when you get to high numbers. It's not worth it. Uh, crit bonuses because we're using a lot of crit. And increases physical penetration. Again, that stacks with the Noxus Breath that we're using. It also stacks with the Serpent, or the Two Fang Serpent that we're using, Two Fang Snake. So 1.4 there, around 5 for the Noxus Breath and 5 from uh, Fang Snake. Before any other buffs in a trial, we have the best part of almost 12k penetration on our own, which is really, really good. If most of the bosses are set around 18k or so, you're stripping most of that before Alkosh has even landed. Um, don't worry with these, I don't bother with those. This is personal preference. 75 in there, 75 in there, because it gives you a good uh, middle ground for damage redis resistances across the board. Very, very nice. Uh, certain trials will mean that you'll have to use these differently, but for the first everyday use, that's really, really useful. And you do not want to get dotted. You haven't got enough health for it. Your DPS. Resist the dots. Um, and they stack as well. If it's a poison dot, you resist poison. And the dot ticks at the same time. It's huge. 10% quick... In, oh, sorry. 10 points in quick recovery. This is for two reasons. One is for the heal um, bonus. And two is for this. You will always be resing someone in a trial. And if you aren't, then you should probably be kicked. Because you're not doing your job properly as a team member people need to be picked up why would you want to take more damage while you're resin you want to mitigate some um, that's it for champion points right this is a little complicated I'm trying not to make it be that boring because I'm going over multiple sets and multiple setups and all that kind of stuff um, we'll start with maelstrom you've already seen the potential of the two fang snake alongside infused for a magic for a stand DK now I'm going to show you some variations to that First of all, Maelstrom Arena, as I said, if you are new to the DK and you've been running in there with easy mode Stam Sork, you're going to struggle. So make sure you do go Vicious Orphidian and Twice Born. Um, put some more into health if you really want to. But um, Twice Born divines on everything, obviously. One heavy, one medium. Sorry, one heavy, one light, five medium. Um, and the jewelry of Vicious Orphidian if you can get it. Because this sustain bonus at the end is really going to help you getting used to Maelstrom Arena as a DK. I now use this because my sustain is much much better and so is my damage because of this set. So that's why I use it but that's going to take some practice. Don't run in there and round one and think you're going to clear it first time because you may not. Also in Maelstrom I switch my skills a little bit. Um, Evil Hunter I don't always take. You can put um, Steel Tornado on for fast executes but I've, I really like this setup, so I don't really change it too much. I'm not going for a world-class score. I just want to get uh, decent ones to get on the scoreboard. Or when I was doing flawless, I wanted to flawless. This bar is pretty much the same. Back bar, this is different. You can pop corrosive armor instead of the banner for survivability, for resource management, because it's a bit cheaper, for all sorts of really good reasons. That's your choice. Some bosses require the banner, some bosses require this. Failing that, just use this on all bosses. It's up to you. It's really, really powerful. 
you take 3% of your max health in damage and do a poison dot. You're basically immortal for 10 seconds as long as you can throw a heal on. Um, the dots are the same, but I don't use igneous weapons. I will also get to that one. I do sometimes use caltrops instead, but um, I've kind of dumped that one now. So just keep this back by the same. This, instead of igneous weapons, I use igneous shields. The reason for this isn't so much for the damage shield, although it is nice, but it's for the buff. Uh, several buffs. Earth and Heart passives. 5% um, extra weapon damage. Ultimate gain. Gives me a shield. Gives me stamina back. And when I use it, I have 25% increased healing done, which is for vigor. I'll show you that actually. Let's pop a potion. Oh, I can't do it because I just no, wasted one. Never mind. Um, without my major brutality on, that already is 15k. With major brutality on, it's about 18. Um, so pop this on if you're in trouble, pop a bigger straight afterwards. Also, if you pop this for six seconds, your rapid strokes are going to be stronger in terms of healing received, and so are your uh, blood craze. They're all going to bonus. Uh, Sorry, they're all going to benefit from this. So use it to protect yourself, use it to get the buffs on, use it to make your heal bigger. It's really, really useful. No, we obviously don't have major brutality on now. So what I do for that, you will need medicinal use three to make sure you get the full time on your potions. I use this, which is the speed potion. Uh, for several reasons. One, I want to be fast, which you already have a vicious orphidian. I'm not using vicious orphidian, so I use this. Um, for 47 seconds, cooldown time is 45. Major Brutality, 47 seconds, I don't need to cast a buff for it now. And it gives you stamina back, and it also gives you stamina recovery, all for 47 seconds. Um, that is really, really powerful. And also it helps you a lot, especially on the last boss where you have to move from uh, crystal to crystal, and you have to go between the, the shields to try and hide behind. You don't have to waste all your stamina sprinting your ass off or putting fast speed buffs on because this will keep you going. Really, really useful. Um, you are very squishy, yes, but you need to keep on top of your Ignis shields and your heals. Um, if you look at a video on my channel recently, I believe there was a live um, flawless run. I think I might have been using crit potions on that one. I use that occasionally as well. Um, I do use these specifically on the last boss. But you can use crit potions if you prefer. You can take Evil Hunter off and put Steel Tornado on and then use this potion instead. So you'll get Savagery on both bars and you'll get Brutality on both bars. That is a personal choice for you. Speed potions or crit potions. Both are just as effective in the right situation. Um, the skills, as you can see, obviously I don't really change the skills that much. I pretty much just change one skill out. That can go Steel Tornado if you want. That can go Ignis Shields. That's it. Very simple setup. Now, oh, there's so much to cover. Um, trials. If you are not that one-man band that is coming to give as much DPS solo, solo as possible, or even if you are, um, um, there is another set that is very, very essential to Trials, and it doesn't alter this setup at all. The only thing it requires you do is take as many synergies as possible. Spam that shit. There should be at least two people using it. Perhaps the tank is, perhaps DP, two DPSR. But for you, obviously we've already established that Vicious Orphidian is weaker than the Two-Fanged Snake. However, for this particular build. However, if you look here, ignore the top crit bonus because we lose that. Minus Slayer. Crit bonus, and at the bottom, weapon damage. Now if we look at Alkosh, crit, minus layer, weapon damage. The damage is identical. The crit is exactly the same as the two fang snake. The damage is exactly the same as the vicious orphidian. So you can run that. Now this is where the, the increased damage comes from in comparison to the two fang snake. Two fang snake outperforms vicious orphidian, Alkosh outperforms them both. Because as long as you're taking synergies, you are going to be doing Vicious Orphidian based damage, but you are also going to be getting a 17k dot every time you proc a synergy in frontal AoE. The most damage I've seen this do is around 3.2, 3.3, maybe a little bit higher uh, per tick 
per target per synergy. So if you have, which I do have, around 40k DPS on your own, once you hit these synergies, say for example you hit a spear, a necrotic orb, a blood funnel, a nova, and a liquid lightning, that's five. If you hit them all in the space of a couple of seconds, and they're all running while your dots are running, and you're getting 3k a tick on loads and loads of targets, not just one, per dot, that's 15,000 extra damage on your DPS per target. It's really, really strong. There's no reason not to use this apart from if you don't have it. Now, I'm going to borderline embarrass myself here, but then again, I'm going to show you why it's not bad. The boots are gold, yes. The hands are gold, yes. The necklace is gold, yes. And here's where everyone can benefit. The rings are actually blue. You can enchant them with gold uh, glyphs. Um, you still get, this is where people get, get it wrong, they think a blue ring is no good. False. You still get very high crit. You still get 5% minus Slayer. That does not change whether that's blue or purple or gold. So you get a full bonus there. You dip a little bit on weapon damage and the dot you dip a little bit with as well. But only very, very slightly. You, you do so much damage. If you pop 5 synergies right now, that's free DPS. Free. Just for popping a freaking synergy, you get resources back for popping synergies in the Undaunted passives. It's, why would you not use it? Even a blue set is going to be stronger than a straight up Vicious or Fitting on its own if you are taking synergies correctly. Not only that, the big one of course is that it um, debuffs all the targets you hit in front of you as well. By removing their physical and spell resistances by 3k-ish for 10 seconds. As long as you're popping one synergy every 10 seconds, or someone else's as well, the bosses or targets in front of you are stripped of their resists. And also remember what else you're doing to strip their resists is you're using this. The breath, which is 5.2k. 5.2k and Alkosh. Not only are you using really good penetration yourself by using this ability, but everybody else gets it as well, um, unless the tank's already using it. But in AoE, you get 5.2 there, 3k from Alkosh, that's 8k straight away, just stripping resists. This is physical, but Alkosh is both, so physical and spell resist, so you help everybody out. It's ridiculous in terms of damage per output. If there isn't any synergies, your group's doing something wrong, because there should be synergies. So, I'll take a breath. That's a lot. Um, skills, I've already gone over. Champion points, I've already gone over. Gear setup wise, as a Stam DK, not fucking Stam Sork, they're different. Um, make sure you have one of two things. Three things, actually. Vicious or Fidian and Twice Born, if you are learning, if you can obtain it, if you can practice Maelstrom with it. Two Fang Snake if you are more advanced and you can get hold of it and you can manage your own stamina this will outperform Alkosh if you're doing any dungeon or trial and your group are competent enough to throw enough synergies down if they are then this is going to outperform a lot of them your damage will be the same as vicious or fitting as far as all of your static dps goes um, but Alkosh combined with all the procs and the synergy popping will give you so much more extra damage and it will give you that missing AoE that you do not have because as a stamped DK you have Volley and you have Noxus Breath and your Banner and that's pretty much it. You can put a uh, Deadly Cloak on if you like in, in place of uh, Evil Hunter so that you can have some AoE and just use Crit Pots but that's a choice you can decide on. So in order Vicious Ophidian first, Two Faced Snake second, Alkosh third. There's your choices in sets. You can use infused if you would like on a stamp sword, but I wouldn't recommend it because they, they do work better with precise and sharpened. But this is the reasoning and explanation behind why I use infused weapons on my bar for DK. It's just too powerful. All the dots are powered and so is your bow. Your bow is empowered by the infused volley. Um, 
also as I'm sure you would like to see, the stats are as follows. 20k max health, or 20.5 even, 38.3k uh, max stamina, 3.8k weapon damage, 64% crit. You can have more crit if you, as I've already said, if you go Khajiit you'll be over 70% there. Um, but you will suffer with stamina, uh, both in sustain and amount, because you'll be down to about 32, maybe 33. You might be able to push to about 34. But you'll be significantly lower anyway, because you won't have the 10% extra bonus. Um, which means, yes, you will crit more often if your dice roll in your favor, but your flat damage, which doesn't crit, and your damage that does crit will be marginally less because you are missing that stamp pool uh, bonus. However, it suits some people, not so much for me, but they're both very, very good choices. One for flat out resources and damage and the other for high crit chance to maintain a decent flow of crits. So it's up to you, but they're the stats anyway. Uh, let me just rebuff that again so you can have another look. Uh, also, I am a vampire. So in the eighth round in Maelstrom, I make sure I don't get hit by anything, otherwise I'm toast. Um, I'm using Thief and the Shadow, so we have really, well, high-ish crit and really high crit damage. Uh, stam and health food, so max health, max stam. And that's pretty much it. Oh yeah, and I can't bite anyone for another five days, never mind. Uh, the vampire bonus is purely for the damage reduction in trials, which, if you look at the passives, is quite substantial. Um, where was it? Oh, recovery is also quite good. Um, our recovery sucks, but that helps. There you go. 30, up to 33% reduction to damage when you are under 50% health. That increases in strength the lower the health you have. And also in PvP, you can hide really, really quickly, which is fun. So you can, uh, yeah. I'm gone and you can run full speed which is cool anyway yeah overall thank you very much for watching thank you for subscribing i appreciate all the following i wouldn't have the channel without you guys um and i will see you again very very soon okay bye bye